Okay, and how I like to start my list off is like I'll number them, you know, like say one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll start with like six things. So the first thing I always like to practice first would be like rudiments. And let's say I want to practice my rudiments for 10 minutes. So I'll just write 10 minutes. And, you know, I might go through, you know, the full 40 or I might take some of them and practice them just on a practice pad with, you know, off away from the drum set. Because a lot of times what happens is, you know, you practice rudiments on a drum set and the first thing you know, you're starting to play rudiments. And then the next thing you know, you're starting to bang around on the rest of the set and then you're not really doing what you're supposed to be practicing, which is rudiments. So... I always urge uh, my students to, I tell them to get off the drum set, take a practice pad or your snare drum and just go somewhere else besides the drum set and just sit down with a book, you know, if you have a book or if you have the rudiment sheets and just go off and just practice just the rudiments. It's the best way to do it and it really focuses you on what you need to get done instead of just messing around with the rest of the drum set. Number two, the five stroke roll. Okay, and as you can see, those are really easy to do, uh, but the problem is uh, everybody wants to try to get them faster, so you have to practice them slow to get them faster, and again, that's just one example of the rudiment, so let's go on to the next step. So like number two, I might do uh, coordination exercises, so I'll write down coordination. And a coordination could be anything from like a book, uh, practicing right and left combinations. Uh, it could be, you know, on the drum set with ride cymbal, right hand, left hand on the snare, uh, bass drum with your right foot, maybe your left foot with the hi hat as well, or maybe double bass, and just practice different coordination things between your hands and your feet. So that's a good thing to do.
Number three, uh, you could start working on like rock songs, which is always important. You know, me being in the Rush band, uh, Gold Rush, I have to practice, you know, with a book sometimes. Sometimes I'll pull out the music and just kind of listen to it and see what's going on with it. So I'll put down, uh, let's say, rock beats and maybe uh, 15 minutes with that. And, uh, or if I wanted to do like a, you know, like I said, I was pulling out the Rush book the other day and looking over some of the patterns that Neil goes through on certain songs. Sometimes that's a great practice thing to do too, is just to go over certain parts of songs instead of the whole song. Just work on little bits that are giving you problems. And sometimes by doing that, just focusing on that and not the whole song, you really get kind of a little more, you know, uh, practice time with the, the problem spots instead of trying to do the whole song and then you get to that one problem spot and then you keep doing it over and over. So it helps to do that, you know, individually. Uh, so again, rock beats, but like I said, that could be very, a lot of variations of different things. I could do a book, a rock book with just rock beats. I could pull out a, you know, a book that just says rock, you know, uh, rock patterns or rock fills or, you know, uh, variations of both, you know, so that could be a lot of different things there. Again, this is a very generic list, but, you know, this is how I usually start. And um, it could change from month to month. I might change it up a little bit and maybe put these in a different order. Um, but I always like to start with rudiments first because it kind of gets your hands going first with your brain and kind of gets everything, you know, uh, coordinated uh, first and kind of get everything communicating with your brain and your hands. So it's a good way to do it. Alright, number four, uh, we could put down uh, actual rock songs. So the stuff that I like to, you know, do with the rush from beginning to end is actually put a CD on. You know, I could put down uh, rock songs with, you know, CD. Uh, let's put 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, this might be a John Bonham book or a Led Zeppelin book or uh, in a Rush book um, and just going through the whole song from beginning to end playing along with the CD um, I think it's really good to kind of get the performance of the song down so that way you're you know you're pretty solid on where everything falls at and when you start a song from beginning to end you gotta know it you know know where you are at every minute of the song so it's good to practice those from beginning to end all the way through so that way you get the full arrangement um, and any parts that you do forget then keep going over that part till you get it really comfortable You could do jazz. You could probably do some funk. Try some different funk patterns, um, etc. You know, uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do things there.
Um, number six, I think uh, for that time there, if you wanted to, you could use use this time to kind of just mess around. So we'll call this mess around time because that's important too. And let's say you want to, you know, another 15 minutes or so. So by going off this list, you know, uh, following these each time you practice and you go through one, two, three, four, five, six each time, you've got a little more direction and not so much like if you were without a list and you just went down there and say, okay, today I want to just practice this. And then uh, then you start messing around. Because the problem was when I used to practice, uh, I, there was too much mess around time and not enough practice time. And it really didn't give me a lot of a uh, chance to really get some good practice time in. It was more, you know, messing around and not really focused on what I needed to do. Like, you know, my lesson book for the week or whatever. You know, my drum teacher gave me a certain page out of a book or a couple pages. You know, I spent a little bit of time with that, but then more time messing around. So by the end of the week, you know, I might have practiced maybe an hour for the for the book and maybe five, six hours for messing around time. So it really didn't make it you know feasible for me to even practice almost hardly because it was just like you know I didn't practice at all and uh, I didn't get a lot out of practice time so hopefully this will give you a better idea uh, how to do some things and again if, if you guys have any comments or suggestions on other ways that you guys like to do uh, practice things send them send them my way I'd love to to hear some other ways of doing things